Katie Ortega, welcome. Good to hear you sing. Thank you. Such a good singer. Oh. Toronto. <laughs> no, so, uh, so tell me about your your family. Am I right in that in that you're uh, Irish and Mexican uh, descent? That's correct. Yeah. So that sounds like a like a lot of singing to me. Yes. Yes, <laughs> and enjoyment of tequila and Guinness. <laughs> <laughs> So you have uh, you have every reason to celebrate. That's right. <laughs> um, and and uh, it must feel amazing these days when I, I mention some of the voices that your yours sometimes gets compared to, where it's you know all the one names: Dolly, Emmy, Patsy, and so on. Does that does that make you feel great, or does it make you feel a little strange? Well, I mean, it's of course an honor to be mentioned in the same sentence as those wonderful yeah. legendary singers. Um, I just feel like it's a lot of pressure. Yeah. <laughs> I have a lot to live up to when well, people compare you to people like that. I know, but the bottom line is it's a compliment. People enjoy it. Sure they, they, yeah. they, they love hearing that, that uh, magic in your, in your voice, you know, that thing, that certain you know, indescribable thing that singers have. Um, what I'm what were you listening to? What? Sorry, <laughs> I just wish I could sing like you. Hey, um, what do, what did you listen to when you were growing up? Despite the fact that you had this multicultural background and you're in Toronto. And well, funnily enough, my mom was a huge Leonard Cohen fan, so wow. I loved Leonard Cohen. I yeah. thought he was incredible, and she really got me into his lyricism yeah. and his deep voice. Yeah, <laughs> amazing, amazing writer. Yeah, and. Um, and were you uh, in a neighborhood when you were growing up? I un seems like I read somewhere where you said maybe you were a little um, bullied as a kid or, or ostracized in some way. I was bullied as a kid. Um, I just was always kind of felt like a bit of an outsider and a weirdo. Yeah. But now it works to my advantage, so. <laughs> <laughs> so a lesson to all those feeling bullied. <laughs> yeah, just wait till the fashion sense catches up with you. Yeah, <laughs> and, yeah that's when you get to your 30s, you could tour the world and... <laughs> Do fun things like that. Yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> um, and and I also I think you were kind of late to the guitar, right? You you pulled it off the wall that was hanging in your house and decided. When I was about fifteen, sixteen, yeah. my dad had a, an old classical guitar on the wall, yeah. and taught me how to play. It was a nylon string, so that's be, that's why I don't play with um, with a pick these days. Yeah. You know, um, Canada has always had a lot of serious country music fans. It's like yeah. it's not just the you know, not just the Hank Snow fans, but serious country music um, pilgrimages from Canada down to Nashville or even down to Wheeling when the WWVA Jamboree was happening. Um, did you find your way into that world or were you always a little bit on the outside of that scene? I was a bit on the outside. Yeah. Um, I just remember when I was making music in, in the Toronto scene, um, when I was first starting, uh, I guess it would have been labeled alternative country. Right. And it wasn't really a thing. I think it's just sort of recently become a thing with the advent of these like great television shows like True Blood and, and Walking Dead using right. like, you know, Americana, now they call it Americana, right. but <laughs> country tinged kind of tunes. Yeah. And, um, and now it's become a thing and now, you know, now you hear it a lot more. But when I was doing it, I was sort of advised not to do it and right. to pick a different path. But yeah. I just loved that kind of music, so I kept doing it. Yeah, and when you get to Nashville, obviously that's, uh, that's much more the flavor, of the, flavor of, the, of the environment down there, sort of mixing genres a little bit. Yeah, for sure. So does that help or does that hurt when you're suddenly in the in the belly of the beast? Does that make you stand out less, but you're among your peers, or, or what's what was that experience? Oh like? well, you know, I really just went to Nashville for sort of a history lesson and get that hands-on. Yeah. You know, go to the Ryman, go to the yeah. uh, Country Music Hall of Fame, and check out all that yeah. stuff that they have there. And um, it wasn't to, to make it. I, I already had like my my indie deal in place, and I had booking agents and stuff. So yeah. I wasn't trying to be a a big country star. <laughs> Al although, as I <laughs> although, as I understand it, you did recently play the Grand Ole Opry at the Ryman. Yeah, I did. It that's, was kind a, of a, that's kind of a big country starish thing to do. I never was so nervous in my entire life than stepping on that stage. Because people may, might not know, but like when you rehearse for the Opry, you, you go in a room and you do an acoustic rehearsal. You don't actually step on the stage. So the first time actually stepping on stage is when you perform your first song in front of all those people. And I nearly peed my pants. I'm not oh. even kidding you. <laughs> I'm That's not even kidding. I should have wore depends. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm so sorry for you. I know, me too. But you know, <laughs> it's good that you're. Uh, it's good that you're aware of it. You know, my mom told me it wasn't supposed to happen until I hit her age. But <laughs> I don't know. 
you know? This goes to show you folks that being a big uh, performing artist isn't really always all it's cracked up to be. <laughs> there's ad, there's danger everywhere. <laughs> there really is. <laughs> I don't remember that. I mean, I've played the Opry a few times and I don't remember having that backstage thing, but, or nor do I remember peeing my pants, but, <laughs> I, you know. But in, the bottom line is you, uh, you, you crossed a, uh, a milestone and that was great. It was absolutely, yeah, yeah it was incredible. Now, um, you've got your red boots on. I do, yeah. <laughs> these, are, uh, these are your kind of trademark characteristic mm -hmm. thing. Yeah, I love Wonder Woman. Yeah. She wore red boots, so. And the, and the lipstick is a Wonder Womanish color, too. Yeah, for those I just listening on the radio. Just secretly want to be a country Wonder Woman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of a cool combo. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's really no such thing, I don't think, is there? There is now. <laughs> yeah. That's wild. I can deflect bullets, too. Yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> With your veil. <laughs> Um, so you, you uh, are out there traveling, touring. You made a really good record. You had several producers involved with this recent project. Yeah. Um, kind of some, some big time names. And Colin Linden, of course, the uh, Canadian now uh, working a lot in Nashville. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the, the uh, John Paul from the Civil Wars yeah. is involved. Who else yeah. was in your uh, Ben Tanner from Alabama Shake. Ben Tanner from Alabama Like All my friends yeah. are celebrities. I can't lie. No, I'm just kidding. I'm totally kidding. <laughs> That's not true. Um, no, I just, I knew um, John Paul White from, uh, he was very gracious enough to do some co-writing with yeah. me. So when it came to making a record, and I co-wrote with him a second time, we did it in his studio. He had a studio, and, and a sort of light bulb went off in my head, and I said, oh my gosh, I'm making a record. Do you think maybe... And he said yes, and wow. it was a pretty awesome experience to go down to Alabama and absorb all that yeah. history. Muscle Shoals. Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah, really cool. That's a vibey place. Totally vibey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, it sounds like you're on quite the adventure, and uh, I want to congratulate <laughs> you on day. this new record. <laughs> I think the idea of uh, Faded Gloryville, which is the title of your new record and the title song, is kind of an interesting concept, really, just about... Um, Especially being living in Nashville, you know, where there are stars made and stars faded uh, yeah. every day. That's yeah. true. It doesn't last forever. Yeah. Well, that, that song was inspired by the Jeff Bridges movie Crazy Heart. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I kind of watched it. And I think every musician would look at that opening scene where he, the bowling alley, <laughs> the bowling the, alley oh scene. God. And um, he's playing a bowling alley and he's sort of down on his luck and he he can't get a free beer from the, the venue, the bowling alley where he's playing and he's got an addiction problem. And he's older, I guess. I don't know how old he was in the movie, older than me. And I kind of asked myself if uh, if I would end up like that. That seems really dark to say, but I thought, you know, because my future is sort of in uncertain. I don't, never had a hit song on the radio. I'm not a radio artist. Um, so, you know, you don't have sort of anything to bank on, and you don't know. So yeah. I asked myself if I would end up that way, and then I remembered when I first started and the big dreams that I had and all the pitfalls that I had to climb yeah. out of. And Yeah. It's, a, it's an interesting journey. My first gig was a bowling alley. Yeah. So it could come full circle. <laughs> <laughs> I have yet to play. Now I kind of want to play a yeah, bowling alley. <laughs> I, I, I can tell you it's slightly disconcerting to hear those pins pop you know, in the middle of your show. It's like... <laughs> yeah, I, pl I played... Here's another a, one. We look <laughs> I played a grocery store once. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's these things that make us strong. Clean up an aisle five. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not that depends thing again, is it? <laughs> All right, listen, we, uh, we have lots more uh, music to get to. Thanks, thanks again for stopping by. My pleasure. Yeah, congratulations on your new CD. Here's you. more music. Welcome back, Lindy Ortega. Hi, this is Nick Forster from E-Town. If you want to stay up to date with all the performances, interviews, and behind-the-scenes footage, click the subscribe button. Thanks. <laughs>